Paris, Table of Contents. All about Paris, with visiting and touring information, geography, history, attractions, and other points of interest. Dr. Sidney Soapcloth. Dr. Sydney 22 at gmail.com. 2023. Narration by Dr. Sydney Soapcloth. Zoe Phonemes. And Nathan Cole Tove. For a complete discussion of YouTube navigation, please go to tiny.one slash yt navigator. Paris has been a city against which all others are measured. The capital of France. Paris is sometimes characterized as the city of light. It is acknowledged the world over as the perfect example of cosmopolitanism, raising city life almost to an art form. Many of you have been to Paris before. So this will also be a bit of rediscover Paris. Some quick facts about Paris. Paris is the capital of France and by far the largest city. The population of Paris is 2.2 million. The population of the Greater Paris Metropolitan Area, Air Urbain de Paris, is 11.5 million. The Greater Paris Metropolitan Area is the second largest in Europe, after Moscow, and along with London. The Greater Paris Metropolitan Area is the second largest in Europe, after Moscow, and along with London, and approximately the 20th largest in the world. It is also the world's largest French-speaking metropolitan area. Here is the location of Paris. Paris is located in northern France along the banks of the Seine River and 110 miles or 177 kilometers from the coast at Le Havre. Paris is 425 miles or 684 kilometers from the Mediterranean Sea at Marseille. Here is a simulated color satellite image of Paris. This shows the left bank and right bank regions of Paris based on the downstream direction of the Seine. The region of France around Paris is called Ile de France. This region surrounds the capital city with heavily industrialized and thickly settled suburbs. Ile de France has almost 20% of France's population, living on 2.2% of the nation's surface area. This region has one quarter of France's industry, including most of the manufacturing of aircraft automobiles and precision engineered and chemical products, including such companies as Citroën and Renault, and precision engineered and chemical products. Paris is divided into a number of districts, or arrondissements, with numbers that spiral outward from the center at the first arrondissement. Out to the periphery at the 12th through 20th arrondissement. Most of the sites of interest are in the 1st through 11th arrondissements. As mentioned before, the Seine River divides Paris into the right bank and the left bank as seen looking downstream. Most of the sites of interest in Paris are within a short distance of the Seine. Now a little about the history of Paris. The First Parisians the Parisii tribe, were Gauls who lived, fished, and farmed on the Ile de la Cité in the Seine River. The Ile de la Cité is where the Notre Dame Cathedral is now located. The first recorded name of this settlement was Lutetia, which is Latin for mid-water dwelling, in the 3rd century BC. In the year 52, the Gauls were defeated and expelled from the island. A prosperous Roman encampment replaced the Parisii village. 
After the fall of the Roman Empire, the name Lutetia is replaced by Paris after the original inhabitants. In the reign of King Clovis, late 5th to early 6th century, Paris became the capital city of the Franks. In the year 250, Saint Denis, or in Latin Dionysius, became the first bishop of Paris. In 845, and again in 885, the Vikings came up the Seine to attack Paris. In 1163 the building of the Notre Dame Cathedral began. In 1257 the Sorbonne, or University of Paris, was founded. In 1682, Louis XIV moved the French court from the Tuileries Palace in Paris to Versailles. On July 14, 1789 the Bastille was stormed marking the beginning of the French Revolution. The royal family was forced from Versailles back to Paris 1793 and 1794 were the years of the reign of terror of the French Revolution. 1800 to 1815 are the years of the Napoleonic Wars in 1814 Paris was occupied by the coalition consisting of Russia Austria and Prussia after the fall of Napoleon and again in 1815 Paris was occupied, this time after the defeat of Napoleon at Waterloo. In 1840 Napoleon's remains were buried at Les Invalides. The period 1852 to 1853 marked the Second Empire under Napoleon III, Emperor of France. During the Second Empire in 1853, Baron Haussmann planned wide new boulevards and rebuilt the center of Paris. During the Franco-Prussian War of 1871, Paris was under siege for four months, then surrendered marking the fall of the Second Empire. The Eiffel Tower was built for the 1889 Exposition Universelle during La Belle Epoque, the beautiful period a period of prosperity for Paris and France. In 1900, the Paris Metro was opened, and Paris hosted the Summer Olympics. And in 1924 Paris hosted the Summer Olympics for a second time. In 1925, the Exposition Internationale des Arts des Corps de Say Industrials Modernes started the Art Deco style of design. During World War II, Paris was occupied by Germany beginning on June 13, 1940. In August of 1944 Paris was liberated by the Allied forces. And now some of my favorite things to do and to see in and around Paris. This shows some of the famous sites close to the center of Paris. 1. Stroll along the Champs-Élysées from the Arc de Triomphe to the Place de la Concorde. Or go even further down to the Musée du Louvre, the Hôtel de Ville and the Notre Dame Cathedral. 1. Strolling along the Champs-Élysées A good starting point for a stroll along the Champs-Élysées is the Place de la Concorde. Here is the fountain, and in the background are two identical buildings, separated by the Rue Royale. The eastern building houses the French Naval Ministry and the western one is the Hôtel de Crillon. The Rue Royale leads to the Église de la Madeleine. The center of the Place de la Concorde is occupied by a giant 3,300-year-old 3, Egyptian obelisk. The obelisk is decorated with hieroglyphics exalting the reign of the pharaoh Ramses II. It was given by the Egyptian government to France in the 19th century. 
looking toward the Luxor Obelisk on Place de la Concorde. On the other side of the Seine is the Palais Bourbon which houses the French National Assembly. Here again is Luxor Obelisk on Place de la Concorde with the National Assembly housed in Bourbon Palace, built from 1722 to 1728, in the background. This is looking toward the Luxor Obelisk on Place de la Concorde. Just to the east of the Place de la Concorde, and at the eastern end of the Champs Elysees, is the Jardin des Tuileries or Tuileries Gardens. And just beyond that is the world famous Musée Louvre. The Jardin des Tuileries, or Tuileries Gardens, was created by Catherine de Medici as the Garden of the Tuileries Palace in 1564, and first opened to the public in 1667. It became a public park after the French Revolution. In the 19th and 20th centuries, it became a favorite place where Parisians celebrated, met, promenaded, and relaxed. This is the Champs-Élysées, looking west from the Place de la Concorde and towards the Arc de Triomphe. This is the traffic circle of Champs-Élysées Marcel Dassault. This is a view of the Champs-Élysées looking east from the Arc de Triomphe to the Place de la Concorde. At the western end of the Champs-Élysées is a very large traffic circle known as Place Charles de Gaulle, historically known as the Place de l'Étoile, the meeting point of 12 straight avenues, hence its historic name. The Place de l'Étoile was renamed in 1970 following the death of General and President Charles de Gaulle, but is still often referred to by its original name. In the center of the Place Charles de Gaulle, or l'Étoile is the famous Arc de Triomphe. 2. Go to the top of the Arc de Triomphe. 2. Go to the top of the Arc de Triomphe. The Arc de Triomphe de l'Étoile is one of the most famous monuments in Paris honors those who fought and died for France in the French Revolutionary and the Napoleonic Wars, with the names of all French victories and generals inscribed on its inner and outer surfaces. Beneath the vault of the Arc de Triomphe lies the tomb of the unknown soldier from World War I. These are stairs to the top of the Arc de Triomphe. This is the view of the Champs-Élysées from atop the Arc de Triomphe. Here is the view from the top of the Arc de Triomphe looking down the Avenue des Champs-Élysées. 3. Take a cruise on the Seine. A cruise on the Seine takes you past many of the points of interest in Paris. 3. A cruise on the Seine. Four. Go to the top of the Eiffel Tower. The Eiffel Tower or La Tour Eiffel is an iron lattice tower named after the engineer Gustave Eiffel, whose company designed and built the tower. The Eiffel Tower was erected in 1889 as the entrance arch to the 1889 World's Fair, and it has become both a global cultural icon of France and one of the most recognizable structures in the world. The tower is the tallest structure in Paris, and the most visited paid monument in the world, with over 7 million visitors each year. The third level observatory's upper platform is the highest level accessible to the public in all of Europe. The tower received its 250 millionth visitor in 2010. 5. 
See the Notre Dame Cathedral. Notre Dame de Paris is on the Ile de la Cité of Paris in the middle of the Seine. The Notre Dame is one of the finest examples of French Gothic architecture and among the largest and most well-known churches in the world ever built. Notre Dame is the cathedral of the Catholic Archdiocese of Paris, in that it is the church that contains the cathedra, or official chair, of the Archbishop of Paris. The cathedral treasury is notable for its reliquary, which houses the purported crown of thorns, a fragment of the true cross and one of the holy nails, all instruments of the passion and a few of the most important first-class relics. Notre Dame de Paris is often reputed to be one of the most prominent examples of Gothic architecture in both France and in Europe as a whole. The Palace of Versailles, or in French, the Chateau de Versailles, or simply Versailles, is a royal chateau in Versailles, a town about 20 kilometers southwest of Paris. When the chateau was built, Versailles was a country village. Today, however, it is a wealthy suburb of Paris. The court of Versailles was the center of political power in France from 1682, when Louis XIV moved from Paris, until the royal family was forced to return to the capital in October 1789, after the beginning of the French Revolution. Versailles is therefore famous not only as a building, but as a symbol of the system of the absolute monarchy of the Ancien Régime. This is an inner courtyard of the Palace of Versailles. The Palais Garnier is a 1,979 seat opera house, which was built from 1861 to 1875 for the Paris Opera. The theater is often referred to as the Opéra Garnier, the Opéra de Paris or simply the Opéra, but is also known as the Palais Garnier in recognition of its opulence and its architect, Charles Garnier. It was the primary home of the Paris Opera and its associated Paris Opera Ballet until 1989, when a new 2,700-seat house, the Opéra Bastille, with elaborate facilities for set and production changes, opened at the Place de la Bastille. The Paris Opera now mainly uses the Palais Garnier for ballet. The Palais Garnier is probably the most famous opera house in the world at least partly due to its use as the setting for the 1911 novel, The Phantom of the Opera, and the novel's subsequent adaptations in films, and Andrew Lloyd Webber's popular 1986 musical. Chapter 11 The Musée du Louvre, or simply the Louvre, is one of the world's largest museums and a historical monument. A central landmark of Paris, the Louvre is located on the right bank of the Seine just beyond the two Tuileries Gardens. The museum is housed in the Palais du Louvre, or Louvre Palace, which began as a fortress built in the late 12th century under Philip II. Remnants of the fortress are visible in the basement of the museum. The building was extended many times to form the present Louvre Palace. In 1682, Louis XIV chose the Palace of Versailles for his household leaving the Louvre primarily as a place to display the royal collection, including, from 1692, a collection of antique sculptures. During the French Revolution, the National Assembly decreed that the Louvre should be used as a museum to display the nation's masterpieces. The museum opened in 1793 with an exhibition of 537 paintings, the majority of the works being royal and confiscated church properties. 
The Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Paris, commonly known as the Sacré-Cœur Basilica or in French, Basilique du Sacré-Cœur, is a Roman Catholic church and minor basilica dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus. The basilica is located at the summit of the hill Montmartre, the highest point in the city. Sacré-Cœur is a double monument, political and cultural, both a national penance for the supposed excesses of the Second Empire and the Socialist Paris Commune of 1871. Sacré-Cœur is dedicated to the Sacred Heart of Jesus, which was an increasingly popular vision of a loving and sympathetic Christ. Construction of the Basilica began in 1875 and was finished in 1914. It was consecrated after the end of World War I in 1919. La Saint Chapelle is a royal medieval Gothic chapel on the Ile La Cité near the Notre Dame Cathedral. It was consecrated in 1248 as the Palace Chapel of Louis IX. It contains one of the most extensive collections of 13th century stained glass anywhere in the world. The École Militaire, or Military School, is a vast complex of buildings on the Champ de Mar, Field of Mars, near the Eiffel Tower, and housing various military training facilities founded by Louis XV in 1750. The main building was built by Ange Jacques Gabriel, 1769 to 1772, on the Champ de Mars, or Field of Mars. A call militaire Les Invalides is officially known as L'Hôtel National des Invalides, or the National Residence of the Invalids, is a complex of buildings containing museums and monuments relating to the military history of France as well as a hospital and a retirement home for war veterans, which was the building's original purpose. The buildings house the Musée de l'Armée, the military museum of the Army of France, the Musée d'Histoire Contemporaine, as well as the burial site for some of France's war heroes, notably Napoleon Bonaparte. This shows the location of the Le Hôtel National des Invalides. From the Hôtel des Invalides there is a broad expanse of the Esplanade des Invalides, leading down to the banks of the Seine. This is Les Invalides. A replica of the Statue of Liberty is on the Ile La Seigneur, a man-made island in the River Seine. It was given to the city in 1885. This is a walkway tunnel in Parisian Metro, Metro Station Montparnasse Bienvenue. The Hôtel de Ville, or City Hall, is the building housing the administration of the city of Paris. The Hôtel de Ville has been the location of the City Hall of Paris since 1357. This shows the location of the Paris City Hall. La Défense is a major business district of the Paris urban region. The district is at the westernmost extremity of Paris's 10 kilometers long historical axis, which starts at the Louvre in central Paris and continues along the Champs Elysees, well beyond the Arc de Triomphe before culminating at La Défense. This shows the location of La Défense. Around its 110 meter, 360 ft, high ground d'arc and esplanade, Le Parvis, La Défense holds many of the Paris urban area's tallest high rises. With its 72 glass and steel stories, and 200,000 daily workers, La Défense is Europe's largest purpose built business district. The Vadum Column at the center of Place Vadum was erected by Napoleon I to commemorate the Battle of Austerlitz. The column was torn down in 1871, by decree of the Paris Commune, but subsequently re-erected and remains a prominent feature on the square today.
Place Vadum is located it to the north of the Tulare Gardens and east of L'Église de la Magdalene, and is the starting point of the Rue de la Paix. L'Église de la Magdalene or the Madeleine Church, or more formally, L'Église Saint Marie Magdalene, and less formally, just la Magdalene, is a Roman Catholic church. L'Église de la Magdalene was designed in its present form as a temple to the glory of Napoleon's army. L'Église de la Magdalene is to the north of the Place de la Concorde and west of the Place Vadum. Chapter 20 The Pantheon, from the Greek meaning every god, was originally built as a church dedicated to Saint Genevieve and to house the box containing her relics, but after many changes, now functions as a secular mausoleum containing the remains of distinguished French citizens. The facade is modeled on the Pantheon in Rome. The Pantheon is in the Latin Quarter in Paris on the left bank of the Seine, near the Sorbonne and not far from the Notre Dame Cathedral. The Sorbonne is part of the University of Paris and had its origins as a theological college, Collège de Sorbonne, founded in 1257 by Robert de Sorbonne. The university has 12 campuses in Paris, seven of them in the historic Latin Quarter. Paris Sorbonne enrolls about 25,000 students from France and around the world. Every year. This shows the location of Paris Sorbonne. Boulevard Haussmann is one of the wide tree-line boulevards created in Paris during the Second French Empire by Baron Haussmann, with enthusiastic support from Emperor Napoleon III. Boulevard Haussmann is 2.5 kilometers, or 1.6 miles long starting near the Arc de Triomphe. There are several large department stores, such as Gallery Lafayette on Boulevard Haussmann. This is the famous interior of Gallery Lafayette. La Samaritaine is a department store built at the start of the 20th century. The Pronton department store is another large department store on Boulevard Haussmann. Other places of interest in and around Paris the Chateau de Fontainebleau, or Palace of Fontainebleau, is one of the largest of the French royal chateau. Fontainebleau is located 55 kilometers south of the center of Paris. The palace as it is today is the work of many French monarchs, building on an early 16th century structure of Francis I. Will it be hot? Or will it be cold in Paris? Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year in Paris. Here are the average high and low temperatures in degrees Celsius throughout the year in Paris. Here is the average number of rainy days per month throughout the year in Paris. Hey Doc! We want answers to our questions. How do we get around Paris using the metro from Place de la Concorde? This is the route of the metro. This is the Paris metro. This is the route of the metro from the Grand Arch de la Défense to the Château de Vassennes. This is part of the, the route of the metro from the Grand Arche de la Défense to the Château de Vassennes. How do we get to the Eiffel Tower? This is the route of the metro to the Eiffel Tower. And now a short video on the 10 top attractions of Paris. Hey, this is your travel host, Naomi. 
I'd like to give you a tour of the top 10 attractions of Paris. Number 10, Hotel de Ville. This grand neo-Renaissance style landmark built centuries ago is home of the city administration. Number 9, Place de la Concorde. The largest square in Paris, it has a 3,000-year-old Egyptian obelisk and is particularly beautiful at night. Number 8, the Pompidou Center, a colorfully creative modern building housing a vast collection of modern art. Number 7, Arc de Triomphe. Built in the early 1800s by Napoleon, the Arc is a symbol of national pride. At the top, you'll find fantastic views of Paris. Number six is the Seine Boat Cruise. It's affordable, convenient, and in a short period of time, you can see many major landmarks of the city. Number five, Versailles Palace. A royal chateau just outside of Paris has grand architecture, 700 rooms, and beautiful gardens. Number four, Notre Dame. One of the most recognized symbols in the world World and over 750 years old, Notre Dame has incredibly detailed Gothic architecture. Number 3, Sacré-Cœur. This Byzantine-style stunning white church, despised by intellectuals when it was built, is a must-see for Paris visitors. Number 2, the Louvre Museum. Perhaps the world's most famous museum, it hosts thousands of pieces of great art, including Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. And number one is the Eiffel Tower. Amongst the most recognizable and visited monuments in the world, everyone must experience the Eiffel Tower in their lifetime. Recommended videos, Paris. Recommended video, Top 10 Things to Do in Paris, France Travel Guide. Recommended video, Highlights of Paris. Eiffel and Monet de Creme Braulé. Recommended video, Full History of France, from Ancient Times to Today. Recommended video, The Entire History of France in 23 Minutes. Recommended video, how Paris became one of the world's most iconic cities. Recommended video, Paris Top Sites 40 Attractions. Paris, Table of Contents. Thanks for watching. Please watch some more of my great videos.